Resist the devil, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. So Peter exhorts us in 1 Peter 5, 9. And I wanna share a quote for you from a believer from another country. And when you hear it, I imagine there's a temptation for us to say, that's not me. Right? My experience is different. That's an entirely different thing than anything I know here or it would seem will experience in my life. And on one level, that's right. But on another level, Peter tells us that the attacks from Satan against our life are of the same kinds of suffering as those experienced by people all over the world. Peter tells us you are not alone. So, and such a word about our common life and indeed our common fellowship with believers all around the world gives us hope to pray for one another and to pray for other Christians, especially those around the world. So at the end of September, the Luzon Conference took place in Seoul, Korea. This is the largest gathering of evangelical Protestants for missions that takes place every 10 to 15 years. It's by invitation only, so they have uh, representatives from all sort of different um, areas of the world. And one of, one of our friends was there who reported this from a talk by a man who was a long-term church planter in the nation of Iran. And he said, he said this, he shared this way, he said, the last time, quote, I came to Luzon, this is the Iranian church planter, the last time I came to Luzon in 2010, I was the only one attending from inside Iran. And when I returned home, I was arrested and spent five years in prison because of my faith in Christ. The man added with a wry smile, hopefully that doesn't happen again after this conference. That's a bit more extreme than whatever it is we're facing today. That's a bit more extreme from whatever it is we're facing in this room today. But for many Christians around the world, pressure, obstacles, and outright persecution are not just an imagined possibility, but they're a part of everyday life walking with Jesus. But this text from Peter tells us again that Satan's attacks are the same kinds of suffering. Whatever you are facing today that would tempt you to throw away your trust in Jesus is part of the same temptations and the same pressures that men and women are facing throughout the world. The devil asks all of us, why not curse God and die? And so my exhortation for you this morning is that through prayer, this fellowship of the saints becomes more real to us. We don't need to know all the details about life in, in, in other parts of the world, or in this case, Iran, in order to share in that fellowship. We don't need to know every twist and turn of Muslim terrorism in Nigeria against Christian believers there. We don't need to understand all the intricacies of Big Brother's surveillance in China. It is enough to pray for Christians in other nations just as you would pray for yourself. Lord, Make the gospel appear in its glory for those in pressure-filled and faith-tempting situations. Lord, grant depth of insight to your people as they read your word and protect your people from the choking weeds of worldliness. So dear friends, seek fellowship with your brothers and sisters throughout the world who are experiencing the same kinds of suffering as you are. And then take comfort that we participate in a worldwide family. Now such an emphasis will also protect us from making too much of ourselves and of our problems. And that leads us to pray. Pray with me, please. Most merciful Father, we confess our tendency to make much of ourselves and make little of you. Help us to see our lives and our faith in the light of your global purposes and in the light of your coming kingdom. Give us eyes of faith to see the worldwide family into which you have brought us and grow us 
together with your people among all nations for your glory. Forgive us of our own doubts and renew us today, we pray. And lead us now as we enter into a time of silent confession. Father in heaven, as we remember the same sufferings that we share with your people around the world, we also remember the hope that we share. The hope that we share in Jesus Christ, who is everything to us. He is our Lord, He is our Savior, He is our treasure. Thank you for sending Jesus to save us from our sins. Thank you that he died for us in our place, that he bore the wrath that we deserve. Thank you that he was crucified, dead, and buried, but then on the third day that he rose again in victory over sin and death. Thank you that he is ascended and seated on the throne from which he will come again to judge the living and the dead. We long for his coming. Thank you that this morning because of Jesus we are forgiven and free and alive to you. Thank you for the gospel of your son. We celebrate him now, and we worship you in his name. Amen. I want to invite you to stand now for the assurance of pardon. We have confessed our sins, and so now we remember the good news. The Word of God tells us in 1 John 1, 9 that when we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore this morning, to all who humbly seek the mercy of God, I say to you, in Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven.